All right. How many of y'all came expecting God to do something so big, it's going to take God and you're going to have to get out of the way? Huh? Got about 10 excited about that. Just what I feel in my heart, I need to really tell you before we even get into the sermon. Um, don't let Satan rob your joy. How many of you know, it's just, I'm not, I don't even want you to applaud to this, but I, I just, I, I really need to tell you this. If you woke up this morning and uh, you've got clothes on your back and you had a meal this morning, you're blessed. You're so blessed. You're so blessed. So often we look toward the negative things because it's easier to see a lot of times. But my prayer is that once we get through these series of sermons, that, uh, that God will give you his spiritual eyes and that, man, all you can do is hang on to the goodness of God and the good things that God has done for you in your, in your life and with your job and with your health. Um, I tell you if, you, if you're if you're down and you don't think you're blessed, just go over to the nursing home one day next week. Just go on down to the nursing home, walk down the hall just one time, and uh, just look into the rooms, and uh, man, you'll, you'll walk out with tears in your eyes saying, blessed be the name of the Lord. You'll be blessed in this house, so I, that's why I'll never apologize for being happy in the Lord. I'll never apologize to you to, for preaching the word with no reservation. I'll never apologize to you the way the Holy Spirit wants to work in His churches today. I'll never apologize to you if you're very uncomfortable in this church because here's the deal. If you was not com uh, uncomfortable, if you wasn't comfortable, that I'm telling you, God, God has something for you guys. You've got to let God invade your privacy and give Him your ears this morning. So uh, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah that God is alive. Hallelujah that the grave is empty. Hallelujah that I'm born again. Hallelujah that I'm alive. Hallelujah I'm going to heaven. Hallelujah because God is good. And all the time, don't you lose your praise, Delcorn. Don't you dare lose your praise. Don't you lose your praise. I'm going to remind you today of what we've been studying so far in this series of sermons. I've, I don't know about you, but I've enjoyed it. But here's the deal. I knew when God gave me this word that, man, there's going to be some tough times. There's going to be some tough times. Uh, because any time you bombard hell and you start making a difference and you up, disrupt them, I'm telling you, hell will try to come against you. He sure will. And so to, I want to remind you of the first sermon that I preached. I know y'all remember, but I'm just going to give you some reminders just in case you've already forgot about that. I preached on what you have to do before, uh, while you're outside the ring, before you enter the ring. Y'all remember that? Before you enter the ring. I told you guys, you got to know your opponent. Who is your opponent? Who is your opponent? Who is your opponent? Your spouse? Your children? School teachers? Pastors? Deacons? The person sitting beside you? No. Your opponent it's Satan. And I also told you the second point you have to train. You have to train before you get into the ring. In other words, you've got to know your opponent. You know who he is, but what is his weaknesses? Y'all remember that? What is your opponent's weaknesses? Number one is the Word of God. It's the Word of God. Number two, y'all remember, anybody remember number two? Worship. Good job. Remember who said that? Great job. Worship. One thing that Satan will not do is read the Word and worship God. But praise be unto God, if you're spirit-filled and in this house today, you can read the Word and you can worship the Lord. You can do that. And the third W I told you was your witness. In other words, be careful who's in your corner. Be careful who's in your corner. If the wrong person's in the corner, I promise you, they're sitting there going, hit them again. Get them. Get them while they're down. I really don't like them anyhow. Blah, 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 blah. All of a sudden, you've got the spirit of gossip on you. Wrong spirit. So listen to this. Third thing I said, you have to stay focused. Clear your mind of all distractions. Right now, clear your minds. Clear your minds of all distractions. When well, sermon number two, I preached on that God only gave you one offensive weapon. One, everybody say one. one. Offensive weapon. Good job, Mitchell. One offensive weapon. And what was that weapon? The sword of what? The Spirit. The sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. 
I'm going to teach you before I preach. I'm going to teach before I preach here in a little bit too. We're going to have a good time today. But listen to this. It's the sword of the Spirit. It is the Word of God. It is the Word of God. And today, I'm going to, I'm going to give you a checklist of the war outside of the ring. So we prepared to get in the ring. We were in the ring. We got our offensive weapon. Remember, keep your edge. Keep it sharp. And once you leave the ring, once you're in that battle, there will be a season... There will be a season where the enemy feels like he's not on you like he once was. There will be a season in your life where you say, man, today was a good day. Watch this. Every day is a good day. It's just know how you got to know how to walk in it. You got to know how to walk in your authority, walk in your kingdom authority. So today I'm going to give you a checklist for war in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 18. If you're there, say amen. We read this last week. We're going to read it again. I want this to get in your spirit, and I'm going to preach it until it gets in your spirit. Y'all got it? Number, verse 10, finally, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on. Everybody say, put on. Put on. We're going to talk about this next week. Put on. The full armor of God so that you can take your what? Stand against the devil's schemes. He's a liar. He's a schemer. He's a conniver. Listen to this. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. So if they, if they bleed, they're not your enemy. If they bleed, they're not your enemy. I'm going to help you because some of you are fighting the wrong battles today. Some of you are in the wrong war today. Some of you have got your sword out and you're cutting the wrong people today. They're not your enemy. They're not your enemy. The devil is your enemy. He hates you. He hates your children. He didn't want us to dedicate them kids over the Lord today. He, did, he don't want this church to be filled up. I'm telling you, Satan's got some of these churches, he's lied to them, and they're half-filled, and they're, and they're happy with being half-filled. I'm not happy being half-filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm not happy being half-filled with the blue chairs this morning. I want all that I can get in the name of Jesus. I want all. If you don't want yours, I'll take it, amen. I'll take it, amen. If you say, well, I got all the Lord I want, well, I'll take the rest of yours in. I need more of him. I can't get enough on Sunday to last me Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and Saturday. I can't get enough on Sunday. Even Sunday night, I can't get enough. I only get enough on Wednesday night. My God, I walk away thirsty and hungry. Hallelujah. I walk away with a hunger in my bones and in my life. Say, God, I want more. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. I want more of you. Anybody like that out there? Because if you're like that, you're dangerous. You're a dangerous Christian, man. Because most, most people give God their Sundays, but they don't give them these Mondays. Oops. Had a Britney Spear moment. I did it again. Here we go. Y'all ready? This is a good word. We struggle not against the flesh and blood, but against the rulers and the, the, against the authorities. Listen to this. Against the powers of this dark world. This dark world. And against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. They're, they're out there. You say, Brian, I, I just don't believe it. Why are you going through so much hell then? Why is there so much sickness in this world then? Why is it that churches can't even get along anymore? And no wonder, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it. No wonder the world don't want nothing to do with the churches. Because if Christians can't get along, why would a lost person want to come in here? Man, if we can't get along, the world ain't going to come in here. I don't want none of that junk, yo. Let's just make our minds up and be a dangerous church. Let's just, let's just be a dangerous church. Even if you don't love somebody, say, I love you anyhow. Yeah, be a peacemaker. Be a peacemaker. Hallelujah. I feel the Lord. It says, therefore, in verse 13, put on half the armor. Just put on your shoes that are fitted with the gospel. Just, just put on the breastplate every once in a while. Put on your helmet and guard your mind on Mondays. No, man. He said you put every day. Y'all listen to me. You say, I got you, preacher. Every day you got to wake up and put the armor on. Every day you got to wake up and make a choice. I'm going to put the armor on. I'm going to put the helmet. I'm going to put the breastplate. I'm going to be, I'm going to have the belt of truth. I'm going to put, put my, I'm going to put the gospel peace on. I'm going to do that. I've got the sword too. Hallelujah. He says, every day do that. 
Look here in verse 14. It says, stand firm with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, in place, in place. Everybody say, in place. Because I'm telling you, if your breastplate has been misplaced, uh, it's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. So you've got to put the breastplate on every day of your life. Listen to this. And with your feet fitted with a readiness, readiness, hallelujah, that comes from the gospel. That comes from who? The gospel of peace. If you don't have no peace, it means you're not reading the gospel. I'm telling you, the gospel will give you peace. When the world's falling apart, God's putting you back together. When your families don't look like anything's going to happen, I'm telling you, you'll find peace with the gospel. If you, have, if you don't have peace, it means you're not in the gospel. I'm being honest with you. But if you've got peace, it means you, you're reading, you're ready. You're the readiness of the gospel of peace. That's a good word. It's verse 16, in addition to all, to all this, take up the shield of faith. Take it up. Take it up. Make your mind up. Take it up right now. With which you can extinguish, you can, or to say you might. You can. Yeah, you're able to do this. You can do this. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. Lord, let this word get in our spirit. Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of spirit, which is the, the, the word of God. And pray in the little S or big S. Big S means Holy Spirit. So when you see the capital S in your Bible, it means the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. So in other words, it says when you're in trouble and you took your stand and the devil's still after you, you may need to go have a Matthew chapter 6 moment. You may have to go into your closet, shut the door, get away from all the distractions, and pray in the Holy Ghost. I know Baptists don't like to hear that, but that's the truth. There's such a thing as I am preaching right now, I'm praying in the Spirit. The Bible says pray continuously. That means I can be in the world, but I'm not of the world. That means I can take a punch, but I don't have to fall. That means I can stand with the readiness of the gospel, and I shall not be defeated. Hallelujah. Somebody give him praise in this house. You don't have to be defeated. I know some of you look at me like, that boy's crazy. I'm telling you the truth. I know, I know what the battle was like. Been there, done that, and experienced that. And the thing about it is this, the church has lied so long, we have become so, 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 ah, uh, help me, Lord. We're more worried about going to all these other things. I'm telling you, the Word of God will set you free this morning. My God. So I'm here today. Pray in the Spirit. What does that mean, pray in the Spirit? It means be ready at all times. Be ready at all times. I know the battle's out there. I know who my enemy is. I know who his weaknesses are. I know my offensive weapon I have. Now I'm back outside of the ring, and today was a good day, but tomorrow there's hell in the hallway. What do you do in those days? How do you, how do you walk daily? God gave you one weapon to cut him with. That's the word. But what do you do when you're outside of the ring and you're tired? You've been, it feels like you've been beat up. It feels like you got your mouthpiece knocked out. Here it feels now that you, you, I'm telling you it's unreal. How many of y'all experienced that before in your life? The man seemed like that your wife is your enemy. Oh, three hands, my God. That, I'm going to be honest with you. That's why you're not being set free. You're not being honest. You're not being honest. You're sitting there going, well, what happens at the Rafferty's is, is the Rafferty's deal. <laughs> who, lied? who told y'all that? Your granny did, didn't she? Your mama did, didn't she? That is no truth to that at all. Because I know this, the Bible says that one could put a thousand to flight. Two could put 10,000 to flight. Could you imagine what 500 Holy Ghost Spirit-filled people could do today when we come together and charge in the pits of hell? Can you imagine what a husband and wife who love each other says, you know what, I'm not letting the devil have his family no more. I'm going to pray and pray until my answers come. Amen. I'm going to fast and pray, fast and pray. I'm going to walk in my anointing. I've got my sword in my hand. Hallelujah. I don't know what y'all feel, but I feel good. Nah, 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 nah. This word's helping me as I preach it. The Bible will help heal you as you deliver. There's been times, I guarantee you, Greg Ford and this praise band, y'all been up there going, oh, man, I'm tired. But boy, when you go, dun, 
dun, dun. All of a sudden, the head go. Dun, 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 dun. You know, y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all leave the house all mad, and you get in the car, and you turn on the radio, and all of a sudden, there is Carrie Joe playing. All of a sudden, the Elkhorn Praise Band's playing. All of a sudden, Omega stood up in your heart. And all of a sudden, you feel something energizing you. You know what that is? That's the Word through worship that's bringing God alive through you. That's what it is. You ain't got to go to no Bible study to figure that out. Just read your Bible. Just read your Bible. So here's the deal. The checklist for war. I was going to do all five of them, but I cut, I cut it down to three. Don't, don't, don't everybody shoot me down now. The number one thing the Bible says that you've got to have in your life once you prepared, been in the ring, and now you're back outside of the ring, God gave you these defensive weapons. Number one is the belt of truth. Everybody say belt of truth. Yeah, watch this. This is so good. I've done a study on this. Every piece of armor was relying on the belt. Every piece of armor, Jimmy, from the breastplate to down to my leg, every piece of armor was attached to the belt. Everything was. The belt held everything else together. How many of you know that when you stand for Jesus, even though it may be a storm in your life, hell in the hallway, but if you stand for truth and you stand on the Word of God, it may look like a storm's coming. Hey, but my joy comes in the morning. The morning. It's the belt of truth. The enemy could, it would happen in those days. The enemy said, if I could just loosen their belt. If I could just touch the church and lie just a little bit. If I could just tell somebody a half the truth. If I could just pick the phone up and gossip a little bit. Hallelujah. If I could just hear something. And most people, watch this. If you've got that spirit in you, watch this. I'm, I'm going to shut this out. Y'all ready? If you've got a gossiping spirit in you, it means you crave that. That means some, you're waiting for the phone call for somebody to gossip. I know y'all don't like preaching like this, but it's good. In other words, watch this. Whatever you feel in you, if you're up here worshiping God and you feel that music just energize you and you go, oh, I got to praise him today. I can't stop today. I'm filled with the Lord today. I got to praise him today. If your spirit's leaping toward that, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. But man, I'm telling you, so many Christians have believed the lie. A half lie is the 100% truth. Did I say it right? Half truth is the 100% lie. Y'all are so good. And I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to praise God for that. Because listen, listen, I'm, I'm going to teach you just for a moment. That's how Satan works. Just a little bit of, little bit of truth there every once in a while. He's reeling you in. Thank you for knowing the word. I'm not so prideful. I won't stop this service and say, guys, great job. Great job because y'all said, I said that and some of y'all went. That made no sense. And I seen y'all's face and I was like, that don't look good. So I said, I better change something. You know what I'm saying? So thank y'all, Lord. Thank you for standing up like you. Man, that's good because what that's doing, listen to me. I got to be careful just like you got to be careful. We're in this together. Hallelujah. It's the belt of truth. The enemy, I really believe, is trying to loosen the belt of truth in some of your life. If he does, everything else will fall. I thought about this. I said, man, that old song out, if Satan can loosen the belt of truth in your life, you'd be looking like a fool with your pants on the ground. <laughs> pants on the ground, pants on the ground. Elkhorn be looking like a fool with your pants on the ground. Y'all don't act like y'all sitting there going, I can't believe he heard that song. You did too. <laughs> the, whole, <laughs> the whole world heard that boy, whatever, sang that song. You know? And it's sad. He made millions of dollars off that crazy song. Had over a million hits on YouTube by saying pants on the ground. Isn't that amazing? But I thought about that, man. I said, man, seriously, some of you not, might need to tighten your belts. Some of you might need to say, take another loop, get another loop in that truth. Man, I've been wishy washy, but I'm going I'm to I'm tighten up right now. I, I've been listening to the wrong people, but I, I'm going to tighten up right now. I'm going to take another loop. I'm going to fasten down one more time in my belt buckle. Anybody get this word today? The second thing is this. The first thing was what? 
You're outside the ring. God said, when the enemy comes, you must have your belt on. Put on the belt of truth. Put on the belt. Second thing is the breastplate of righteousness. And here's the deal. Listen to this. Y'all with me? Say, I got you. The breastplate protected the heart. Listen to me. Once Satan loosened the belt with a lie, with a lie, it exposes the heart. Because what happens is this. The breastplate will fall. So once Satan lies to you, here's what's going to happen. The, the breastplate is going to fall. It's going to expose your heart. I just wonder if some of you hurt today because somebody hurt your heart. I just wonder today, are you mad today because you didn't have your breastplate in place? It went down with the belt, the truth, so a lie came in, and now you're hurt over a lie, and you're paying more attention to a lie than you are truth. I really believe that's the problem with a lot of churches today, a lot of Christians today. We didn't wake up. We didn't fasten our belt. A lie came in. He discarded us, dismantled us. The, the breastplate come down, exposed our heart, and now we're mad. We're hurt. We're angry. We're upset because of a lie. How many of y'all got that word? Because of a lie, that's what happens. Jared, come here just for a moment. So, Jared, here's the deal. Who's your opponent? Satan. Satan's your opponent. You're outside of the ring. You've been conditioning, right? Okay. So, you got in the ring. What is the one weapon that God has given you when the enemy comes at you that you fight with? No. A lot of people try to do that. A lot of people try to say, well, come on. You got, oh, oh, this is good. You got fleshly fist in a spiritual battle. Oh, God, that'll preach. Next week, ding, 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 ding. You're trying to use your fleshly fist in a spiritual battle. It will never work. It will never work. So, Jared, he gave you a sword of the spirit. That's the word of what? God. Okay. All right, good deal. So, man, what's, what's that on that wall over there? Right, right, you see it right over there? What are you doing, man? <laughs> you wasn't looking. Here's, you do everything the devil tells you to do. Stand, get up here. This is fun. <laughs> now, I'm your enemy. I'm really not because I love you. But I want you to brace yourself now because I'm coming at you. I'm coming at you like a linebacker. I'm coming at you, man. I'm, I'm going I'm to mess you up. Dude, I'm going to tear you down. I'm going to make you eat this pavement for lunch. You got it? I don't, I don't, I don't like you. I, 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 you ain't nothing, man. I'm going to tear you up. I'm going to get your children, even though you don't have them to be 30 years down the road. I'm going to get your children. I prophesy that. Are you ready? What's that on that wall over there? Right over there. Look. Right over there. You ready? See, I wanted him to do it from the side. He went like that. That's all right. No, turn, turn around. What's that right over there? What's that right there? Look, man. Look, look, seriously. seriously. It's going to get you. Look, look, look. What's the difference? What is the difference? Sit down. That's good. That's good, that's good, that's good. That's what the devil does. It's exactly what the devil does. Now, I'm not telling y'all to walk around like, are you the devil? I'm not asking y'all to do that. But I am telling you, if you don't prop yourself up, if you don't stand up for something, hallelujah, you'll fall for anything. You've got to stand up, brace up, and make the devil shut up. Amen? That's what you got to do. we got too many Christians. we got too many Christians. You'll get out of the ring, and you'll come over here, and you'll go, whoo. And the next thing you know, the enemy has hit you again. 
and you're down on your face again. You're depressed again. Anxiety again. Turn to the bottle again. Huh? Can y'all handle something? It's the truth. The reason why you're not prepared, you're not standing, you're not braced yourself. And you know when the devil's coming, I can do more if I brace myself, Sarah. But if I turn my back, just like Jared did, prime example, we walk away. And the next thing you know, who hits you again? How many of y'all would be honest enough today to say, you know what? I'm in a battle. Huh? Come on. I'm in a battle. That's okay. Because watch this. If your hand wasn't up, you're getting ready to be in one. You may be coming out or in one or getting ready to go in through one. But I praise be unto God I'm going through. I'm not going to stop in the middle. I'm going through the valley of shadow of death. I'm going through that. So did y'all get that? The third point is this. Your feet must be fitted with the gospel of peace. Watch this. My feet is what moves me into position. My feet is what moves me into position to stand where I'm at. If I'm not positioned, if I'm not prepared, if my feet is not in the ground, I'm telling you, I'll be moved. Old Christian song, I shall not be moved. Y'all know that song? I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. I'm not going to move for the devil. I'm not going to move for people. I'm not going to move. I'm taking my stand today. I'm going to stand up and I'm going to be prayed up and I'm going to tell the devil to shut up. Because why? I'm telling you, my feet are fitted with the gospel of peace. 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 I've got to ask you a question. When are you truly believing God? Listen to me, it's going to help somebody. When are you truly? I don't, I don't want y'all to sit here today and say, well, I'm believing the Lord. Why is your fingernails bit off down to the quick? Well, I'm believing the Lord. Why are you on prescription drugs then? And I know, I listen, I know y'all don't like, I think some of you do. But see, when, when God is preaching and God is speaking through his messenger, his word shall not come back void. You're going to get this word this morning. If, you're, if you've got something going on in your life, I'm telling you today under the unction of God, God can heal you right now. He sure can. He can heal you right now. Sheila, can he heal cancer? Kurt Bond, can he heal a back problem? Yeah, 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 he sure can. But you know when you're truly believing God is when you have peace. Listen to me. Let that word get in your spirit this morning. When are you truly, truly believing Jesus Christ? Y'all ready? When you have peace. No matter what the world says, I've got peace. How in the world can somebody be on their dying bed and have peace. How in the world can me and my wife lose two babies and have peace? How in the world can a drug addict, now as an ex-drug addict, come out of that lifestyle and no matter what people say, well, you know what they used to be? Well, you know how they used to talk? Watch this. We all once was lost. We all once was blind. We all was once away from the Lord. But praise be unto God. Hey, I'm born again. I've changed. Somebody better praise him because I'm telling you, you're not the same in Jesus' name. I'm different. I've got peace in my life. That wonder work in peace. My associate pastor was 39 years of age. And he had leukemia. He was older than I was at the time. Now, I want y'all to listen to me. This is going to help you. He looked up, and he said these words to his precious mama. He said, Mama, listen to me. He said, how do I know that I know that I'm saved? How do I know that I know 
that I'm going to heaven. Mama, I'm not going to be here much longer. I was right there. I was right in the room with him. And at that time, I'm going to tell you something. Your intellectualism is void. <laughs> your education is no longer no good into effect. It's what you got in here that will make you stand up. And then when you're on your dying bed at the age of 39 years of old age, you can look up and say, his mama said these words I'll never forget. She said, Scott, did you, did you ask God to come into your heart and to save your soul? He said, yes, mama. She says, God, did you ask God to forgive you of your sins? Yes, mama. Scott, do you believe that Jesus was put in a tomb and on the third day he got back up? Yes, mama. So, Scott, you asked God to save you. Yes, mama. And she said these words. That's how you know. That's how you have peace. If you've done that, all this other stuff. Y'all watch this old preacher this morning. All that stuff you're dealing with right now, it is nothing. Them bills you're paying now, they're temporary. Hey, let me preach just for a moment. That car you drove in today, hey, it's made of metal, and it will be burned up one day. Hey, but what I got inside of me is the joy of the Holy Ghost. I've got something, Tony, this world can't take away from me. If y'all bury me, watch this, I want you to be happy. I, I want you to be happy. Not like some of you are like, praise God. Lord finally got rid of that joke. <laughs> I believe what I preach. Elkhorn Baptist Church, I mean this with all my heart. You can have whatever you want. I just want the Lord. I, I believe that. Yes, People say all the time, say, Brian. I, I've got to have that fire of God. I want that fire, that zeal like you've got. You can have it. Hey, but it's going to cost you. Your family will leave you. Your friends will disband you. They'll disown you. Religious people will come against you. Hey, but praise be unto God. I've got a peace that's welling up like the river of life in me. How about you this morning? Oh, you say, Brian, I, 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 got a, I got a Bible with me. No, it's, they call it the belt of truth. They call the word the sword in the belt. It's latched on me. It's on me. Some of you need to take hold of that belt of the truth, and you need to pull, pull, pull. Some of you are hurt this morning. You know why? Because you, once the, the devil lied to you, the, the belt came off. It came down, and now it exposed your heart. Some of you have unforgiveness in your heart. Some of you are sitting here looking at me, and some of you are not. Oh, God, speak this word. God, give us ears in this church to hear straight from the throne room of God. God, I don't want to play church. Hallelujah. God, I am your church. God, I need the belt in my life. Lord, I need that breastplate back up on my chest. That when the devil throws arrows at me and darts at me, God, I can stand up against the devil. And God, I want peace in my life. There's a lot of miserable people here today. You're mad at yourself. You're mad at your family. You're mad at people. You, you're, you can't even look in the mirror and say, I love you to yourself. Oh, I'm preaching now. You have no peace because you don't know peace. You're distracted right now. Praise team, y'all come. There's things going on in your life. You're mad. You're miserable. You can't even stand yourself. You can't even talk. You can't even pay attention in church without passing notes. Shame on you. Got your cell phones out and playing Donkey Kong. You better hope I don't see it. Either we're going to have church. Either we're going to have a Holy Ghost party. 
Either we're going to believe the B-I-B-L-E or let's all go home and we'll all die and go to hell. Hey! Y'all don't like preaching now, do you? It's the truth. I said this Wednesday night and I'm going to say it again because God laid this, laid this on my heart this morning. November the 8th is a big, big, big day. November, November for election of this country. If you don't vote, don't you complain. Amen. We need Christians to stand up and take back what God has given this country. We need to charge hell if we got to charge hell and take back what God has given this country. Hey! Yeah, yeah! Yes, sir! We got a president today, and watch this. I may get shot for saying this, but you know what? I've got peace. So I've got peace this morning. I don't believe nobody killed me right now, to be honest with you. I'll tell you, I got my breastplate on. I've got my helmet on my head. And my breastplate ain't down to my legs, down to my feet either. My God, it's over my heart this morning. Oh, I've got peace in my life. We got a president won't even stand up and do the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. And you've got people today call themselves spirit-filled Christians and sold out, but you're voting for them. Mm -mm. I know y'all are looking at me like I'm nuts, I'm crazy. I'm telling you the truth this morning. People's voting yes for a president that won't even stand up saying, God, we trust. We're voting for a president that's supported by the Muslim nations. And then America's sitting back going, well, I can't believe America's doing this. Oh, I can. Miss Sheila, you've read the Bible enough in your life. America, better get back to praying. Oh, America, hallelujah. Yeah, America better get on its knees in this last hour and cry out Jesus Christ. America better cry out for God like never before in this last hour. Hallelujah. Mm. If you're mad at me, good, maybe you'll do something. Maybe if I got to make you mad, make you do something, I'll make you mad, make you do something. America, Elkhorn Baptist Church, we may only be 500. But what if I told you, what if it took just 100 votes to get a new president in there? You say, Brian, oh, I know y'all mad. Brian, you should, politics and religion don't mix. Who lied to you? Hey, it affects the church. We better stand up for the truth in this last hour. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I wave the banner over the church. I wave the banner over the church. Hallelujah. Woo. Oh. Shalom, <laughs> peace, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, in Jesus' name, I feel the Lord in Jesus' name, I feel the Lord in Jesus' name, Lord, I praise you in this house, what if I told you the reason why America don't have peace is because they've got us far away from peace, that woman didn't take prayer out of school, Christians allowed prayer to get out of school. I know we may only get five hits off YouTube this week. That's all right. I hope the president listens to it. The reason why America's in the shape that America's in oh, is because Christians are not standing up. We have cowered down. <laughs> we have believed half a lie. Lord, I praise you in this house. Ooh, I feel you, Lord. I'm not going to back, Lord. I, 
I want to make a stand today, God. Hallelujah. Publicly, I will stand for you until my last breath is breathed. I will preach the word of God like a man on fire. I will never apologize to God for the way you're working in this, in this, in this state, in this county, in this church. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, feel this atmosphere, feel this church. May we have peace today. Oh. May we have peace today. I feel that in my heart. May we have peace here today. That when we walk out them doors, I got peace. Come on, Greg, sing this. I sing this over you. Come on. Come on.